Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. Also, happy Pride! <laughs> this is your reminder that this channel is a safe space. Trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary people do exist and love is love. If you don't agree with any of those things then you know where the door is. For the rest of Pride Month I just want to have a bit of fun and I'm going to do another mashup costume because you all know how much I love a good mashup costume. <laughs> For a long time now I've wanted to do a drag look. I've also wanted to do a Trixie Mattel cosplay because I think it's going to be really fun making like a big stacked wig and also having a go with that makeup. Also Trixie is just so much fun. I've seen lots of historical drag looks on like Drag Race and stuff but I've not seen that many Victorian ones. Do you know that very recently Jinx Monsoon did do a Victorian one, but I had started planning this video before I saw that. I'm thinking this is going to be really fun because not only is it going to be a drag Victorian look, it's also going to be Victorian meets 60s because of the whole Trixie Mattel look. And I have gone over many ideas in my head of how I can make this work. The first thing I need to do is I need to make myself a new bustle because I want to do a skirt that's short at the front for that 60s mod look but long in the back and my current bustle you'll be able to see the inside of it so I'm going to have to make like a short bustle shouldn't be too hard. I do still have some of the wire stuff left over from when I made my original bustle. I also found this super cute retro print fabric in pink and orange. This outfit is going to be very pink, which is very tricksy. And I just think this looks so cute and I think it's going to work really well for like the main bodice and like the bustled up like outer skirt area. I've got some plain pink for the underskirt and the kind of details. Right, I have got a lot of work to do, so let's get cracking. Okay, so because I want the skirt to be like this kind of shape, and then we'll have the overskirt going like that, and then all bustled up around there. My current bustle comes down to around here so you'd be able to see the inside of it. So what I need to do is make a new bustle that's just in this area. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is have the belt, some fabric bits, have the wire bits attached like that and then some twill tape connecting them together and then on the inside I'll have that so it's kind of corseted so I can tighten it up. This is based on a sketch that I saw on a blog which I will link to in the description and I'll also put a card to it as well. I think it was called the Star Bustle. So I hope this drawing makes any kind of sense. <laughs> From the back it would look like this. So that bit will be corseted like that and then I'll have the metal bits and they'll be connected like that. I have got all my boning cut out. I am also in a lot of pain because I just stubbed my toe really hard. <laughs> Either way this is going to be the piece that's going to go around the outside, kind of framing my bum sort of thing. And then these are the ones that stick out and make it bustle shaped. So 
all I need to do with these now is I need to cut out some material to attach this to um, which will also go around my waist and kind of go onto my hip area and then I need to do the channels for these so it shouldn't take me too long I reckon I should have this done in a, a few hours and then I can move on to the skirt right I've made myself like a little kind of hip thing <laughs> I don't even know what to call this I've also messed it up as well I should have left these edges raw because I'm going to be attaching a waistband to it but never mind the plan is going to be this is going to attach onto here and then each of these is going to attach like that obviously with it bent I'm one-handed right now so I can't do it very well <laughs> Yeah, like that. No. <laughs> uh, I did only make these little tiny things for the boning because the boning is really thin and I, it's just a waste of material to make them like a centimetre wide when the metal's only about three millimetres wide. So these are all tiny. They will still do the job though, like they did with the other one. So I'm going to get going with that and then I will get back to you probably when I'm doing the lacing along there that's just to kind of pull it in because these are going to want to be straight so they're going to be pushing it out flat so the lacing on the inside is going to pull it all in so that these do actually bend Now that the bustle's done, it is time to move on to the skirt. What I've done is, this is the pattern for my kind of generic late Victorian skirt. And I have shortened the front panel. Idea being that I want this kind of shape. So it's long at the back and then short at the front. So hopefully this will work. I've made this panel just a, like literally half an inch wider, just so that it's a bit more open at the front. Just because I, f I liked the, I liked the width of this panel when I was kind of holding it against myself, but this doesn't include seam allowance. So I have added some seam allowance onto that. What I'm also going to do is with my side panel I'm going to add on a little bit towards like the front at the bottom just because I'm a little bit worried that with the bustle it's going to make that seam tilt backwards so I don't mind if the seam's tilting forwards a little bit but I do mind if it's tilting backwards so I'm going to add just a bit more probably about two inches I reckon. Looking at my grey skirt I'm thinking about two inches. So now I just need to cut that out of my pink fabric. Got all my pieces surged now. There's some building work going on outside so if you can hear power tools I apologise. <laughs> but yeah everything's surged what I need to do now is put a placket about six inches long on the centre back. Sew all the panels together. I've used the salvage edge so if I've got all my measurements right I shouldn't need to hem the bottom. I will need to hem the bottom of the front panel though because that's the really short one. 
I'm thinking about a petticoat for underneath. I know you're going to be able to see it and that's the thing that's kind of got me umming and ahhing. If I do it, I'm thinking a tiered petticoat would work well, same as I did for my other 1880s outfit. But I would have to do the ruffles on the inside, I think, for it to be aesthetically pleasing. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. Um, it probably, I'd be aiming for white, but if I could find a pink duvet cover, that would be great. I'll have to see what they have in the charity shop though. But yeah, let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, doing the other YouTube-y things would also be great, like liking this video. It really does help the algorithm. I started by stitching on my placket. For a detailed explanation on sewing on a placket, check out my 90s goth pants video. Next, I sewed my back and side panels together. Okay, so what I've done now is I have just pleated it all up into the back and then I have levelled the hem at the bottom and I'm just working out how much I need to take off the top. The reason why I've done it like this is because I've got a really nice edge there from the edge of the fabric and I'm thinking it's going to be a lot easier to just have that be the hem because it is a nice clean edge and just take off from the top. It's a little bit higher at the back right now but once I've got the weight of the other fabric on it that'll get that'll push the bustle down so that'll be fine. There's another panel to go on the front there, the shorter one. And this is what I was thinking about the inside, because at the moment, I know it's not ironed yet, but it just, it, it looks kind of boring and it looks kind of messy having the seams in there. So that's why I'm thinking I could do with a petticoat, really, that's in the same shape as the underskirt. Some thinking to do. I wouldn't be able to do anything about that now anyway because I've not got the fabric I have to wait until I've got some monies on Tuesday so trip to the charity shop on Tuesday I think to get that the fabric for that I stitched my darts on the front and side panels I then attached the front to the rest of the skirt I attached the waistband keeping it smooth at the front and pleating up the excess at the back. It was then stitched down, stitching in the ditch to secure both sides. The underskirt is finished and I'm really pleased with how it's looking. Now I need to do the overskirt and for that I'm going to be using a truly Victorian pattern. This one is TV382. Yep, that's right, 382. Um, it's an asymmetrical overskirt. I want mine to be symmetrical just because I think an asymmetrical one's going to look a little bit weird with this outfit. So what I'm basically going to do is copy the pleating up and stuff on both sides instead of just the one. For the front panel, that needs to be considerably shorter than the one that's in here. So I'm going to have a look at the pattern, get an idea of the general shape and then basically copy that but smaller <laughs> and hopefully it will work. Okay so this is the shape I've decided to go with for the front bit. So 
this bit is going to be straight across the front then this bit's going to be pleated down and all this side is going to be pleated up the challenge i am going to have i think is ideally i want the pleating on the sides to be kind of even so that means i'm going to have to pleat up the back a lot tighter than it usually is so that it will fit into the smaller space so it remains to be seen what happens with that <laughs> it may work it may it may not so i'm gonna do my best i'll have a little play and see what looks good I worked out all my pleating based on how much excess there was once pinned to the waistband. I quickly realised though that I'd overcomplicated things, as usual, and it wasn't going to work. I cut out a new piece using the front underskirt as a base. This worked out so much better. I hemmed the bottom of the front piece. I pleated down the back sides to match the front sides. I then attached the front to the back. I attached the waistband in the same way as the underskirt. To finish, I hemmed the bottom of the back overskirt. I then used snaps as closures. pleased with how this is looking so far it's got the exact look that i was going for i love the colors as well i think it looks really really pretty i am still really thinking it needs a petticoat because it does just look so boring on the inside so i think a nice kind of roughly petticoat underneath the back area i think would look really really nice i've just had a thought as well Something that Victorians and drag queens have got in common, padding. <laughs> I'm really liking the waist to hip ratio that I'm getting with this outfit because I've been using hip pads. I'm going to have to look into getting some opaque tights, I think, because as much as I love my tattoos, they don't really go with the outfit, especially considering this is a Trixie cosplay as well. Trixie doesn't have zombie cat tattoos on her legs <laughs> so yeah that would be something to look into if anybody knows anywhere where i could get some good proper opaque tights let me know in the comments because in my local area i can only find the ones like i'm wearing now where you can blatantly see all my tattoos through them even with two pairs so yeah i think i'm off to a good start with this project Really looking forward to doing the bodice. I'm going to have to draft a new pattern for that because as much as I am all for body positivity and I am totally fine with the way I look, I do think a bigger chest will work well for this. <laughs> and I do happen to have one of those 
plus two cup sizes bras. So I'm gonna draft a pattern with me wearing that. I think it'll also help to kind of balance out like the bustle area as well. That's one other thing actually, with the bustle, I'm not 100% happy with the way that the overskirt is sitting at the back. So I'm thinking what I might do is just tack in a few areas just so that it's more bunched up because it's just kind of hanging there at the moment. That's totally my fault. I should have just bought a pattern for a symmetrical overskirt, but I didn't. It should be an easy fix though. I've tried just kind of gathering it up with my hands and it does work. So I think just a few little tacks on the inside just to bunch it up in places will look really, really cool. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed part one of this drag meets 60s meets Victorian meets Trixie Mattel cosplay video. If you'd like to stick around then you may enjoy this video right here and I will see you next week for part two. Bye!